So welcome back to Overhaul Overland. You know, it's so important that when you're rebuilding any components on your vehicle, you choose quality people to do the work. And you've got to also make sure that they're using quality parts. And together, that's going to give you a really good result. So every vehicle will have its weak points. And over time, you get to see what those weak points are. So what Terrain Tame have done is they've taken the weak points that we found on the gearbox and they've addressed them by improving not only the parts, but also the design of the parts. And in this episode, Alaric and I are going to look at some of those upgrades. Well, Alaric, it's good to see a lot of bits from my gearbox in one place here and the new bits we're going to talk about. So I'd really like the fact that we've now got the pieces stripped, we've got them all cleaned up and washed. Take us through what we're going to change, what you found in more detail. Okay. Everything's been well, the worst of the grease has been taken off. Starting in the front, we have our input shaft. We noticed when stepping the way in the front where the pilot yeah. bearing goes. Now that it's clean, we've also seen that this shaft has actually been resleeved before. Yeah. Now that's generally something that, it's, a, it's a case, basically a budget repair. It's, it's not something that I think I would want to do again and we're going to replace this because there's got to be a risk of that coming off. It's, possible risk. It is a very common practice, okay. uh, but with the risk involved in our business, for instance, we don't like taking any risks, so we'll replace it with a new shaft. Okay. No risk of the of the sleeve coming off, yeah. causing damage to your clutch, maybe even your input shaft, and having you stuck along the way with shudders and whatnot. So the reason for replacement is the worn tip on this one. We've got a brand new nice one there. And this is a product that's now supplied by Terrain Tamer. Yes. And um, again, direct replacement, really good quality, and we can just fit it in. Yes. The next part, we've noticed, if you want to zoom in here, we have, we have found thrust marks on the back of the synchro ring, which tells me it's overextended its range. It's actually touching the clutching body of the shaft. And if you were to look the gap between the body and the synchro, it's, it's, it's too little. It must be a bigger gap than that. So also in replacing, synchro is a wearable item. Right, Good yeah. practice to replace them when you do an overall. And of course, there we have a full brand new set. Of synchros. And these, these, are, these are replaced. They are genuine uh, and they do come in the kits normally. So we're going to put brand new right through. We'll put all yes. new synchros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then, with regards to an improvement on the gearbox, which Terrain Tamer offer, is the third and fourth gear hub. Same, you'll remember when stepping, we, we, we showed that the fifth gear has a staggered spline, not a full complement of splines. Um, so that will, we'll get to that one just now. But on the third and fourth gear hub, we have the same. We have a staggered set of splines, which obviously load bearing yeah. only in three places. And the previous person that worked here also hammered this on with, Beat a, it on with, with a, a chisel. Yeah. <laughs> so a bit of damage there. Not, not functional damage, <clears throat> but with regards to upgrade, Terrain Tamer offer the hub with a full complement of spines, which basically doubles the load bearing capacity of this. And Fantastic, extends yeah. the life of it. Right, we've got a third gear, second gear, first gear. Nothing much to show there. Um, synchros will be replaced. On our main shaft, our original main shaft, we had the, the wear on the spline, slight wear in this case, but it is in fact yeah. worn. So together with the rain tamers, full complement of splines in the fifth gear, which goes there, it will also increase the load bearing capability and last longer next time. This shaft, the tip has also been resleeved with a hardened inner ring, which is a, a general repair in the trade. Yeah. But, you know, we wouldn't want to take the chance of anything going wrong no, on your expedition. So the shaft will also be replaced with a new one there. Um, yes, that's basically what we see right, wrong. Right. The other things we are going to do uh, is two upgrades. The thrust washer that runs behind the fifth gear on the lay shaft, which will basically be here. I can quickly demonstrate, just put it together. Then your fifth gear thrusts against that. 
they have a slight little weak, weak spot. These two bits that are machined here actually weakens the washer. So it's actually the indentments, there's not enough material yes. around the back. Yes. Okay. And they snap in half. Yeah. Then your fifth gear moves forward against this retainer plate and it all just chews one another two bits. So terrain timer have come up with something, if you want to have a look at it. it is this a is a lot thicker. It's a lot thicker and stronger. Right. Wow. So it yeah. also eliminates another possible breakage. And then if you were to open the kit for us. So this is what I really like about Terrain Tame. It's one of the things that they do exceptionally well in amongst other products that they supply. The kits that come together, you get everything in the kit. I yes. mean, it's really great. You know, and this kit is slightly smaller on the Prado R box, but essentially we've, when I open it up here, we've got all the bearings, we've got seals and a few improvements. Yes. This um, improvement of the fifth gear thrust washer is included in, in the kit. kit. Yeah. Then also, between the fifth gear and the bearing on the main shaft is this little distance piece or spacer. Terrain tamer often uh, a harder, hardened one, much stronger, much better. It doesn't compress and wear away as the original one. Also included in the kit as standard, a couple of all the bearings and seals as you sure. mentioned. Yeah. And of course, even your little gear lever seat that your gear lever rests yeah, on included yeah. in the kit. So quite comprehensive that. Yeah, one. nice kit, very nice kit. So more than that, what would we look? We've got a nice little present over here waiting for us. Yes, <laughs> it's, um, well, it depends on which way you look at it, an improvement, a change, adaptation. The standard fifth gear ratio is uh, 0.838 to one. Yeah. Now terrain tamer offer a fifth gear kit the drops the ratio to 0 0.711. Okay. It's basically these two gears with a different amount of teeth on them, which changes the output ratio. Now, just to explain to people that the change in ratio is going to affect it in a way which does what? Basically giving in, them... In this case, it increases the gap between your fourth and fifth gear. Right. So the RPM in your fifth drop. gear drops. Right. Just about 500 RPM in this case. So if you were cruising along at, say, 3,000 RPM in fifth gear, you will now be doing the same speed at around about 2,500 RPM. Now, for a lot of people, that's actually quite a significant drop. You know, there's a fuel saving that over long periods you will absolutely make. We know it because our clients have given feedback to us mm -hmm. uh, on a 7 or 8% fuel saving. But it's also the noise of the high RPM. You know, you, when... It, that noise of the engine revving at 3,000 RPM does make you tired. It does wear you down. So if you can drop that down, it's actually much nicer to drive in the car. So there's a big, big option for doing that as well. Yes, but when considering this, if you have a, a very heavily laden vehicle, you must make sure that you have the engine power to yes. pull this fifth gear. Yeah, because it is always a compromise driving your car in fifth gear. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be laboring in fifth gear because yes. it's, it's, you know, your fourth gear is your gear that you use direct drive mm -hmm. for any sort of stressful situations, uphills and that. Yes. But when you've got those long open roads and you can get into fifth and you can really let it put its, run its legs and Perfect. lower the RPM, then yes. it's valuable. And this fifth gear set also comes with the full complement of splines. Yeah. So it is the, the upgrade. So it's a much already. stronger setup than the, than the original which gives us that little bit more confidence. Yes. But still, I think as we've talked before, it's really important to understand how to drive and use fifth gear on expedition, especially with a heavily laden vehicle. You know, driving up hills in fifth gear, laboring, you just put a lot of extra wear on the component. Yes, I think I mentioned while we were driving your vehicle that fifth gear should maintain your speed and your momentum. Yeah. You never wanted to work in fifth gear. Yeah, that's a good Then it will last forever. Yeah, really good. Yes. Okay, well, I'm really looking forward to getting this back together. Um, you've talked about, you know, which gears, when you, there's talk of doing upgrades on certain other boxes, you know, like the H box. Yes. And then people will change a second gear and a fifth gear. And I know Terrain Tamer did this in about 2012. They started with the fifth gear upgrade. Yes. More recently, people are following suit because Toyota have upgraded the parts in those gearboxes. What's, what's the difference? Explain the difference between those. Gears. The, if we were to do a gear ratio change on H box with the Toyota parts, uh, you will hear people say, we've changed the second and the fifth gear ratio. Yeah. 
Now the goal is, the aim is to change the fifth gear ratio, similar to this, to get it down to save fuel and, and, and less Drop noise the in the cab. Gear. The second gear is actually just consequential. It's not an aim or a goal. Because when we replace the, the fifth gear on the H gearbox, we change the cluster or the lay shaft as well. Right. But the one that we use does not mesh with the standard second gear of the H box. So we have to change the second gear accordingly. Right. So terrain tamers one accommodates the original second gear, so you don't have to change that. It's just your fifth gear and your lay shaft. Okay, so it's nice to actually understand that because it's it's not anything to do with second gear more than the fact no. those are Toyota parts and they need to be changed because of the way they mesh together. Yes, the pitch is And different. the terrain tamer setup actually accommodated that because they did it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And that actually is a very good upgrade. We do a lot of those upgrades. Yes, we do. Boxes. But this is the old R box, and uh, still for the mileage it's done and for the time it's served, mm -hmm. I know when we've rebuilt it, it will do another 500,000 kilometers because we've got some bets going on this, so uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It all depends on your, on your driving habits, of uh, course. Yeah, of we'll course. have to monitor that as well. <laughs> um, and then also, we're not going to show the transfer case today. Not much to be done there except... Right. Uh, wearable item to be replaced. There's the kit for that as well. The kit is very similar to this, but it comes all with the bearings and seal. Yes. Okay, great. So, Alec, we've got uh, our diffs, front and rear. Looks quite interesting to see them all out in pieces. And we've got our kits that we're going to use to actually build them up. Now, the clamshell type front diff is a lot more work to assemble and disassemble for you. Yes. What have you found on what we've taken out? We're very impressed with the condition of it, considering the mileage. Both your diffs front and rear look very good. Yeah. So with regards to hard parts, any gears, no need to replace anything. We're going to reuse okay. all that. Yeah. We're only going to attend to wearable items, bearings and seals in this case. And, and then you've got the spaces there. Yes. We're going to talk a bit about a little the difference upgrade. between a collapsible spacer and an upgrade to a solid spacer. So the crown wheel and the pinion, you, we checked and you, you're happy with the wear mark on those. Yes. And then we've got the bearings inside. So this will still come apart further and change the bearings. Yes. Um, let's just have a look at the kit because that's, that's always what impresses me about how we get these kits. Instead of going to order 20 different parts, it does make the, you putting it together much, oh, much yes. simpler and easier. One box, all the bits put in. And I just love it when I open it's like a Christmas present. I get in and I look and oh, nice, <laughs> really good. So we've got our bearings. Now it comes, this is Toyota supplied, but it's a collapsible spacer. Just tell us it briefly. I mean, this is how this works, what it does, and the advantage of, okay. or disadvantage of it. Collapsible spacer or a crush spacer, um, I think it was designed just to make assembly easier, you know, my job easier and right. quicker. Basically what it does is, you'll see on your old rear diff pinion, you have your larger pinion bearing and your smaller one. Your flange and pinion oil seal will be on this side. Now we have to assemble it with a certain amount of preload on these two bearings. Right. If we get them too close to one another, it will be too tight, the bearings will overheat and seize. If we don't get them close enough to one another, your pinion will be loose, it will have up and down movement and your pinion Tested. will move in and out. Yeah. That's a problem. So when we assemble it, we put your flange on, we put the nut on, and as we tighten it, we actually crush the spacer to bring these bearings a little bit closer to one another all the while until right. we have the exact right preload and we're done. Right. So for assembly purposes, it makes life a lot easier rather than having different thicknesses of shim or spacer and assembling, disassembling all the time until we get, get it right. right. So great innovation for assembly, quick and it's done. Now, my challenge always is if, you know, you can get a diff pinion oil seal leaking for a number of reasons. Uh, sometimes the people have changed the seal, they haven't changed the flange, other times breathers block up. But if that seal leaks and you're trying to change it in the bush, you run a risk of someone putting the seal in and over-tightening or not tightening it enough. Yes, we Because now the collapsible yes. spacer should be changed at that point. Mm -hmm. But as I see here, which terrain tamers supply, a solid spacer. Mm -hmm. With now, a selective shim This is what you're talking kit. about. You've actually got to, you've got to actually set the preload using shims now. Yes, and it comes with the spacer from the range. Okay, so it's a setup, pull apart, set up, measure it and test. Mm. But once it's set up, it's pretty well set up then. Yes, and as you said, the pin and oil seal scenario, we have so many people changing a seal, yeah. and then the diff packs up a week later and say, oh, I had my seal changed and now it's packed up. 
uh, closable space cell is not reusable. Right, yeah. So they end up over tightening it just a tad, over preloading the bearings, and the bearings fail, yeah. and consequently the diff even maybe. So what happens, and also, um, so the one advantage of the solid spacer is the ease of changing a pinion oil seal anywhere. You yeah. simply loosen the nut, take off the flange, pop in a new seal, tighten yeah. it, and you're on your way again. None of the settings change. Yes. That's set. And we also, on, on heavier vehicles, with the pinion being thrust in and out all the while, just driving with heavy load, the spacer collapses even a little bit more on its right. own. And the pinion becomes loose, develops an oil leak. So that's another advantage of the solid spacer, you don't run into that problem with right. a heavily laden vehicle. And that we can do that on front and rear. We can. Yeah. Takes a bit longer to assemble. Well, I know the front one's yeah. going to be a lot more work, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to do it. It's worth it. Yes. Okay. So what I really also like to see is we've got, which I, I do sometimes see people don't change the nut, the pinion nut. Okay. It is these days you can buy them to change and they are should be used once. But they're readily available now. Yes. They are. So yeah, another important thing when oil seals change to make sure it's done properly. But in the kit here, we're going to get everything we need, even down to the washer for the filler plug. Yes. So really nice. You'll see in the front kit it has one extra bearing because the clamshell front of it has an extra ball bearing to support a through shaft. Okay. Right. So it'll just in case you wondered why there are five and not four. I hadn't picked it up, but you have. And there's also, you'll see all the two different sizes. There's two different sizes, size, two yes. seals. So they're actually catered for the different size. Different size flange. of flange, yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, well, brilliant. Can't complain. It's a great little kit. Makes your life easy. And again, we've got another kit for the rear, which mm -hmm. again is going to make life easy. And we'll put the same solid spacer. Um, anything you can see on that diff now that we pulled apart that would vary. I know it's an easier diff to build up for you. Yes. But we didn't find any real problems with the crown wheel and pinion, did we? No. Okay. Now all your, all your art parts check out just fine. They'll last a long time still. And then this kit again, similar yeah. kit, except four bearings. <laughs> yes. Uh, and again, the two different nut sizes, because I guess there's a difference yes. in uh, what you might find. And the same with the two different seal sizes. That's right. And comprehensive kit includes all the options. Yeah, so that's what I really like about putting stuff together is that it, it's, it's about doing the job properly. It's about making sure that when it's built up, it's fitted and it's going to last because you can't afford your diff to fail on a trip. It's an expensive but a very important integral part of the drive line. Mm -hmm. you know, and often, I think, not always serviced and checked properly. You know, when we take a vehicle and we build it up for overland travel, we'll always pull out the diff and do an inspection. And more often than not, it comes across to you to go through and to put bearings and seals. And strangely, many of these vehicles that simply just get checked out, a little bit of play is detected on the pinion flange, and either the bearings are slightly worn or the spacer yeah. has just gone softer. But and that's an actually an easy test to do when you're actually underneath the car. You can actually grab the prop shaft at the flange by yes. the diff and just see if you can get any movement or take the prop shaft off. And yes, really the diff flange it. should just rotate. There yeah. should be no in and out or up and down move. Yeah, with a bit of backlash on preload. A little bit of backlash, but if you have any up and down or in and out movement, there's yeah, where. there's a problem. So, Elric, we've got more than uh, in the Toyota stable. There's a whole lot of different gearboxes that you get. And, of course, with all your experience, you've probably come across all the problems. And now there's some good solutions that I'm seeing Terrain Tamer offer. Yes. But I'd like to understand the problems that we're finding, because the 79 series R box has a few inherent weaknesses. And let's look at what, what those weaknesses are, because I may have a few fixes. Okay. Well, not me, terrain tamer. <laughs> <laughs> I've brought along some, so, some examples of what failed. This is of a 79 series diesel right. R box, R151, 150s. Um, on, on your Prado, we've seen the splines that wear on the fifth gear, we've addressed all that. And that's a similar problem on this, and it's yes. got a similar fix with the splines fully yes. integrated on the gear. The other big problem we see is where the gearbox and the transfer case couple with one another. This is your gearbox output shaft and your transfer case input shaft. Where they couple, we get wear on the splines between the two. Yes. Yeah. This one is severe. It is actually completely stripped. So that would be extreme. If you lost that, the vehicle you actually no is going nowhere. Any. 
yeah. So yeah, that's stationary a vehicle. So yes, and um, the other part of it, similar one, is another transfer input shaft. They wear on the splines okay. where the transfer input gear goes. Yeah. The gear also in itself wears. You'll see if I go and put it back on there, you can actually wow. see the amount of movement on it. And, and that could strip too, I guess. It does. It does, really. it does and okay. you are also stranded. Yeah. You're not yeah. going anywhere. Well, now, any, any amount of play on any gear like that is going to only accentuate itself with the more it gets worse. And worse. Yes, it gives, you, it gives you a backlash, which is audible when you're driving. Okay. And also, by doing it, you wear it even more and more and more yeah. to the point yeah. that it strips. So that's with regards to the R box on the 79 series diesel. Okay. If you if you were to, it sort of crosses over your previous cast iron five speed gearboxes like the earlier models, 70, 62, 60s, yeah. 75s. There you can see wow. they also have a severe wear problem where yeah. the transfer input gear goes. Sure. Um, I'm going to put it on there to illustrate. Just get it on the right spot there. There yeah, you well, can see. Yeah. So it wouldn't it wouldn't take a lot, especially if the vehicle was heavily laden, you know, and someone was harsh on their clutch, yes. or went and fitted a heavier duty clutch, and you know, of course, then you have a problem. And if you were on your way on a trip, you didn't know about that. Yeah. You know, that's a it's a real risk of, of yeah. stepping along the way and being stranded. You know, I often say when you're going to prepare a vehicle, especially when you're building back in preventative maintenance, it doesn't take a lot. It is a bit of an investment, but it's a worthwhile investment to take your gearbox out, take the transfer box out, strip it down, and put new seals, at least new seals and bearings in. You know, it's, it's so worthwhile. And then when you uncover a problem like this, it's so much easier to fix it now than when you're broken in the bush somewhere. When I've got a client and he had a repair to his gearbox up somewhere near Zambia, it was badly repaired. And of course, he set off again, and the box has developed another problem. So, you know, when it's, not, when it's basically um, not repaired properly or it's temporarily repaired, it's only going to get you so far before it actually breaks down again. So rather invest the money, invest the time, and just give yourself the confidence that it's actually properly done. And test it. Give it a good test run before you actually go ahead off on the Yes, and, and, and yeah. ourselves in the trade, we've identified common problems yeah. on, on specific models. So... Even if you phone in, you know, we'll be able to say, yeah. we can look at this and this, this is likely, this is unlikely. Absolutely. But as you're saying, nothing better than tearing it down, inspecting all the wearable bits and sorting it out before you leave. Now, I, I know Terrain Tamer, because they've been one of the people in the industry for many, many years, this has been problems that have been knocking on their door, but they've actually got some fixes. So let's just look at, should we look at this one here? Yes. So this is... Your earlier box. Your earlier box. Um, they have a replacement main shaft. Okay. So no need to do any machining or repair on this. Yeah. Just pin it, get the new one. But where the actual upgrade lies, if you look at the difference between our two transfer input gears, right. look at wow. the amount wow, yeah. of extra spline mm. they've yeah. added there yeah. to help carry the load. So instead of having this, let's call it 40, 35 or 40 millimeters, you have this whole 80 or 100 yeah. millimeters. So that will go on there. The main shaft will just bend the old one, get a new one, and this will go on there. It's got a bit of grease on there, so I guess yeah, it's some packing. anti rust. Absolutely no play, obviously, brand new bits. But of course, all this extra um, sleeving on the splines was a huge investment in uh, making sure that that doesn't break down again. I mean, I'll, I'll be surprised to ever see it where. Really? Yes, yeah, with this yeah. amount. Because, you know, these that are worn probably have two or 3,000 kilometers on them already. Yeah. So they haven't stripped yet. So, well, I think this will outlast the vehicle or yourself. And also, <laughs> it fits on the, on the, on yeah, the 79. Yeah, here, here we've got the new shaft, which is a, again on the 79, yes, a replacement I, shaft. Okay, the upgrade on the 79 shaft is very nice. Starters, we have the longer spline there. If you were to compare it with the original setup. Wow. There you sure. can see. Double the length to carry the load. The transfer input shaft won't be much different in there. It's yeah. a full length spline. And then of course also your upgraded transfer the, the input gear. gear. 
will go on there just nicely. Yeah. So, I mean, this really does take out the two weak points in this gearbox. Completely. And now you've got an almost bulletproof gearbox sorted out. Yes, like I said, bearing in mind how long it takes to wear to this level, yeah, yeah, with sure. the upgrades, theoretically twice as long, yeah. and I doubt that anybody yeah. will keep a vehicle that long. Great. Now, I know there's also a very nice kit. This, this, this kit comes complete, and this is for the R-Box out of the cruisers, I'm right? Yes. And um, it's just, it's got more goodies in it than, than my Prada. I'm a little bit jealous there, because <laughs> I see it's got, it's got sealant, and it's got all the synchro rings. Yes, this um, is probably the most comprehensive kit yeah. they have. It has all the bearings, all the seals, all the gaskets for the gearbox and the trans case, the synchros. It includes the, the hardened spacer by fifth gear. It includes the thicker thrust washer. It even has a little rubber boot on your, on your four-wheel drive, yeah. two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive selector shaft. It has the reverse idler shaft, in, uh, sorry, the uh, transfer case idler shaft. On so this inside. is a kit for both the transfer box and, and the for gearbox. the gearbox. Absolutely so it's one complete, complete. kit. complete. There's even a little small parts kit with a little oil feed funnel, the little synchro keys, the O-rings, gear lever, bushings. Very, very comprehensive kit, this one. So when you get to build a box and you get presented this kit to do it, doesn't yes. that make you smile? It saves me about 20 phone calls and traveling to five different places, so <laughs> it's very convenient. Yes. Great. Well, it's impressive. It's nice <laughs> to see. So here. Yeah. There we go. It's um, everything in one box, pretty much. In the hands of the right person to rebuild it, you'll get an amazing gearbox or transfer box and diff. So put the work, put the money, put the energy into building this up properly. Use the right people with good experience, and the outcome will be a great success. Thank you for your opportunity. Great. So I hope you're getting to understand that this series is meant as an educational process for people who want to go over landing. It's about giving you an inside look at what it takes to build back in that reliability, what parts are needed and why we use them, to give you the confidence in your vehicle so that you can go and explore knowing you've got a truck that's solid and reliable. So in our next episode, we get to put it all back together. The components that have been rebuilt by each of the specialists have got to come back in and be fitted back into the vehicle. So remember to tune in, like and subscribe, and for more information, go to our website.